Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 65 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear. If you don't, Look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to show you some ways that you can make TensorFlow Lite run faster on your Raspberry Pi. Now, in the last five or six lessons, we've been looking at doing a little artificial intelligence on the Raspberry Pi. But as our artificial intelligence programming skills have grown and grown and grown, our Raspberry Pi has begun to operate slow and slower and slower. Our frame rates are going down as we're trying to do too more, not too much. And by the end of last week's lesson, when we were doing, ten, we were using TensorFlow Lite for object detection, by the end of that lesson, I was getting down to like two or three frames per second. So I looked over the last week to see if there's some things that we can do to speed that up. And I'm going to show you what I learned. I think there's some things that can really make a difference for us to get a little bit better on the old frames per second. Okay, enough of this talk let me get out of your way and let me switch over to the Raspberry Pi view and so I will need you guys to go ahead and call up your Raspberry Pi and the first thing that we're going to talk about is is that your Raspberry Pi 4 actually has sort of like a simple GPU and there is a certain amount of memory that is assigned to that GPU now with the Raspberry Pi 4 I think I have the 8 gigabytes probably some of you guys have the 4 gigabyte or lower we can afford I think to assign a little bit more memory to that GPU because our graphics, our graph, our uh, the load of the graphics work that we're doing is very heavy. So we need to be giving a little bit more memory to the graphics work. And so that is what I'm going to show you how to do first. You come up to the little start button, you come over and we are going to go to preferences and then we're going to say Raspberry Pi configuration. And then we're going to come over here to performance. Now you can see that I believe this is megabytes, that it's got 76 megabytes of memory that it is giving to the GPU. And I have found that bumping that up will help. Now, since I have an eight gigabyte GP, uh, an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi, the first thing I did was I just came in and made this a gigabyte. And when I did that, then the Raspberry Pi wouldn't boot. And there was no way for me to recover from that, except for to just go in and flash a new card. So understand you need to back your system up before you do this, because this is a little bit of a tricky step and you might not be able to boot after you do it. So one thing, if I made this number too big, it didn't boot. And the other thing, if I just came in and typed a random number, it seems like it wouldn't boot. So what I found was good and what worked for me is I could step it up to about 256, but I don't type in 256. I use this plus error, uh, plus error or plus sign, I guess. And I'm going to just keep clicking plus until I get up to about 256, 252, we're going to call that good. If you have a smaller pie, maybe it would be safer for you to do something like 128. But for me, 252 seems to work. I'm going to click OK. And then do you want to reboot? Yeah. And I hope that my, I hope it reboots. Yeah, I want to reboot. We'll see if it reboots. 
<clears throat> so getting a little bit more memory to that graphic processing should speed you up a little bit. So let's let this thing reboot and then I will show you one more trick that I have up my sleeve. And I guess I could go ahead and start describing that. And that is, is that on these Raspberry Pi 4s that we can be operating them so fast that the board starts heating up and the chip starts heating up. And what happens is the Raspberry Pi monitors its own temperature and it can throttle itself back. It can lower its speed if it detects that it is overheating. And when it throttles its speed back, it does not warn you. Now, that means then that you can start getting slower performance without really understanding why. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn on a temperature monitor. So I'm going to come up here like this to the start. I'm going to come to preferences. And again, I'm going to come to Raspberry Pi configuration. And then we're going to come over here. Ah, no, that's not that. That was for the memory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the taskbar. I'm going to right mouse click, and then I'm going to say add or remove panel items. OK, I'm going to add or remove panel items. Takes a second for that to pop up. There it is. I am going to click add. And what I want to add is the CPU temperature monitor. OK, so I'm going to add that and then boom, you can look up here and you can see that we are operating now. I am operating at about 63 degrees C, which is absolutely perfectly fine. It's when you start getting into that 80 to 90 degree range that you might start throttling. OK, and so now I'm going to close that and now we can sort of see what temperature we're operating at here. And if it throttles, it begins to give you some red lines. Now, you don't get a solid red line because when you throttle, it slows up, it cools down, and then it turns back on. So you just typically see some vertical red lines indicating that you're throttling. So it's going to go in full speed, slow speed, full speed, slow speed. And then that affects your frames per second. And it also probably makes your frames per second jump around a little bit. But if we look here, you can see that we don't have any uh, we don't have any red bars, so we are not throttling. But then again, we aren't running our program either. So I'm going to go ahead and call up my program here just to get it ready. OK, now what I want to show you is or what I want to describe to you on a Raspberry Pi 4 that you think of the operating system like you flash it to the SD card. And then if you reflash the card, you're back to the factory settings and everybody has the same settings kind of if you have a fresh flash. But on the Raspberry Pi 4, there is some firmware that is not part of the SD card. It's not part of the operating system. It is firmware that resides on the E squared prom on the Raspberry Pi board itself. Now, if you bought your Raspberry Pi 4 some time ago, you probably have an older version of the firmware. And if you bought a new Raspberry Pi, you have a newer version of the firmware. And this firmware is something that they typically don't talk about, but it's something that's operating in the background. Now, what I have learned is the earlier, some of the earlier versions of the Raspberry Pi 4 came with firmware that did not manage the temperature well. It did processes in such a way that the Raspberry Pi tended to run hot and it tended to sort of be sitting there throttling quite a bit. And so it is very likely or it's it's very possible that you are running on older firmware. And so I am going to show you I am going to show you how to update your firmware. And this I found is is really a pretty safe thing to do. I did not run into any problems when I tried to do this. And so let's take a look here and I'm going to open up a little some notes so I know exactly what I'm doing. And then I need you to open up a uh, terminal window and then I need to do one more thing here and we will be ready to go. And this I found, I think at least anecdotally seemed like it made a pretty big, uh, <clears throat> pretty big difference for me. OK, so how do we find where we are? How do we find what firmware we have? I can do sudo rpi for Raspberry Pi and then eeprom 
and then update like this. Okay, so we're going to look at the update sudo rpi e squared prom or ee prom dash update and let's see what happened. Okay, you see it is telling me that my bootloader is up to date. Why is it telling me that? Because I just updated it as I was playing around with this. And once you update it, you can't unupdate it. And so you can't see that what I had here yesterday is my firmware was like two years old and it was suggesting that I update it. So when you do this command, I think it's probably likely that it's not going to say that you are up to date. You see, mine is from January 11th, 2023. So unless you bought your Raspberry Pi 4 this year, you're probably not up to date. So now we've got to get ready to update that firmware. So the first thing is we do a sudo apt update. And this is probably going to go pretty quickly for me because I just did the update yesterday. And so it's probably not going to really find anything. It says I'm up to date. Now I do a sudo apt upgrade like that. OK, and now same thing. It's probably not going to really take any time to do this. No, no big deal. Nothing much going on. Now here is the magic. Here is the magic. You're going to say sudo rpi dash ee prom sudo dash ee prom dash update and then you want to do a minus d or i guess i should say a dash d a space and a dash a and now when you do this what it is going to do is it is going to download the new firmware onto your e squared prom and likely it's going to ask you it's going to try to do a reboot me it didn't try to do a reboot why did it not try to do a reboot because i was already up to date okay so now this new firmware manages temperature much much better and you are going to be much much less likely to be running into up here in the upper right into throttling okay so now we are going to go back to that software that we developed in lesson number 64 for detecting objects where we were getting down to two or three frames per second. And we're going to see if we can go faster here now that we've given it more memory and that now that we are managing the temperature better. Okay, so we are going to come in and we are going to run this program and then let's see what happens. Okay. No errors, that's good. And then this is going to pop up here. Boom, look at that, okay. We're three, five, six, seven frames per second. Okay, boom, look at that. We went from two or three frames per second, and now we are up to seven frames per second. And if you look at this running TensorFlow light, doing generic object detection, and decorating our image back with the things that we have found and we're at seven frames per second and i think that is pretty amazing and that's actually plenty you know that's really plenty fast i mean seven frames per second is really plenty fast now i'm detecting four objects and you can see that it is finding keyboard mouse mouse and some things like that let me see if i can get the bottle in here if it'll find the bottle yeah it seems like it is fi finding now the bottle let me get rid of one of these mice. So it's finding the bottle, scissor, keyboard, mouse, bottle, scissor, keyboard, mouse. So you can't quite see the bottle label there. Bottle, keyboard, mouse, scissors at seven frames per second. And I think that is actually amazing. Now, if we come up here and look at our temperature monitor now, you can see that we've gone from the 50s and 60s. We're now up to 77. Now, we haven't seen it throttle yet. We haven't seen it throttle yet, but we're probably getting pretty close to where we might actually begin to see a little bit of throttling. Now, there's one other thing that you might do. And that is, if you look at my Raspberry Pi 4, I have the pan tilt, I have the uh, pan tilt uh, camera hat on it. I do have a heat sink 
down on the Raspberry Pi 4, but you can see that I'm kind of obstructing that heat sink with a, uh, with a hat, but so far it is not throttling. I'm up to 80 degrees. I kind of wonder if I ran this for a few hours, if this thing might start throttling because this isn't just a really great thermal situation. Now, if you also wanted to do thermal management better and if you wanted to stay further away from throttling, you might add a little fan to your Raspberry Pi because if you have a heat seek and a fan, then you are going to be doing pretty darn well. Okay, guys, so this has been what I wanted to do. I think we were successful. We got our frame rates using TensorFlow Lite for object detection on the Raspberry Pi from a few frames per second up to seven frames per second, and I am going to call that a success. Okay, guys, we have spent a little bit of time learning about artificial intelligence on the Raspberry Pi. I think what this point I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and start working a little bit more on hardware. So we're gonna go back and start learning about more of the components in the Raspberry Pi kit. We have probably, how many lessons have we been working with with the camera and the pan tilt and the open CV. We've probably done about 10 lessons on that. And so now we're gonna move on and start doing other things with more hardware. But I will give you a homework assignment. What your homework assignment is to get this object detection working on your Raspberry Pi, get this object detection working on your Raspberry Pi and report your frames per second. Now I am doing a 1280 by a 640, uh, yeah, or 1280 by 720 on the size of my frame and I'm getting seven frames per second. So you guys use the same size so that we're kind of comparing apples to apples and then post a video to YouTube showing us what frames per second you're getting. Because I'm kind of interested to see, are we all getting about the same thing? Are some of you suffering or some of you able to do better? Okay, guys, I hope you are enjoying taking these lessons as much as I am making them. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below because that always helps us with the old YouTube juice. If you have not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. When you do, ring that bell so you'll get notifications when future classes drop. And as always, Always share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.